Okay, Stefan Meisel from uh, the Austrian company UX, a long time member and uh, also very active in the OSGU community, in the Phosphor G community. And uh, Stefan has in, been involved with the company or is involved in the OGC innovation program and uh, you will give an insight what you're doing there. Yes, so thank you very much. So I'm trying to give more technical details also about the um, innovation program. So the light up here is really bad, I don't see at all. Um, anyway, if you have an immediate question, just interrupt me. Feel free, free. There, there should be plenty of time to, to just answer whatever comes to your mind. So first, let me have a quick introduction of our company. It's uh, UX, it's based, we are based in Vienna, Austria. We are a small team of, we are growing, a growing team, but still I consider it small, 14, 14 people. If you're interested in our solutions and services, I put the link there. So for example, one, one thing we are, well, the 11 years that we are in existence, we are coming from purely software implementation. We came also to actually pre-operationals, so the pre is important, uh, services for the European Space Agency. So our background is really the Earth observation, so satellite imagery. And I put up two links here where we operate services for two uh, interesting missions that are not so typical. So it's the SWARM mission measuring Earth magnetic field and the AOLOS mission measuring wind. You, at the end of the presentation, I will show you why this is uh, interesting. And also recently, just this year, we launched what we call UX Cloudless. So we are producing mosaics of uh, optical and radar data uh, to your custom specifications. So what is our OSGU involvement? So since the, the very beginning, we are strongly committed to what's using and contributing to free and open source software. Um, we uh, service provider for, for various developments and, and customizations. So for one thing we started ourselves is what we call UX server. It's also on OSGU Live, thanks to Angelos pinging us constantly. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, it's based on uh, Map Server. So in Map Server, we are core contributors, uh, being a PSC member. And we have lots of different tools that we use in various combinations in, in various projects. So I mentioned a, a couple of here. So one, UXC is, our, is a client, a catalog client. Then we have GeoDiffGS. If you're interested in GeoDiffGS, there were already presentations yesterday how to use it, and Fabian will give a presentation later today about the technical details of GeoDiffGS, how to use it to read GeoDiffs in the browser. Plotty and Graphly, you have already missed the presentation. So Daniel and Lugo have presented yesterday, but you can watch the recording. Those are JavaScript, small JavaScript libraries to do a special task of plotting uh, data in a very efficient way in the browser again. So using uh, WebGL and shaders, and that's where my knowledge stops. <laughs> MapChedi is, is also a tool that was presented yesterday. So by the way, everything I mentioned here is uh, open source. It's, I think all of it, it's MIT license, so really permissive if you, if you want to use any of it. Um, and yeah, MapChedi was also presented yesterday by Joachim. It's a tile engine for big processing to parallelize the task. So if you're interested, I put up also the, the, the GitHub link. And also what we started um, three years ago is contributing to uh, open data. And here, it's, what I mentioned is the s2maps.eu URL. It's a Sentinel-2 cloudless mosaic globally updated yearly. And you can, you can use it for free. So the, the old versions are even entirely free. Uh, so Creative Commons attribution. The newer ones re reserve the, the right for commercial usage. So if you're using non-commercial, feel free. Commercial, it's part of our EX Cloudless offering. So OGC involvement. Again, here, we since the very beginning, we are a, a strongly committed to, to improve and use uh, open standards. In fact, the, the, our first project for the European Space Agency have already been extending OS, uh, open OGC standards, working on WCS extensions. So we are, as what Martina mentioned before, an associate member since, I don't know, 11 years or so. Um, we're co-chairing, I'm co-chairing uh, the coverage is domain working group and the web coverage service uh, standards working group. 
And we are actively participating in like a technical committee meetings, test beds, hackathons, various uh, initiatives that are uh, done by OGC. And we are also maintaining reference implementations, although it's, I, I, I need to talk to, to Dirk, I guess, to, to see what they, they say. It's always up, uh, difficult for an open source project to, to, to keep up with this because you have to the yearly updates and so on. But in the end, the, the reference implementation, because there was the question before about the, the, the site testing, the reference implementations, they get the fees waived. But then you have to renew it and invest effort. And say, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult thing. So reference implementations for WCS based on a map server and the Earth Observation and Application Profile based on, on the UX server. Um, so this is, I believe um, all of you maybe have seen the Tina's presentation just now, so this is just to re recap the, the, the triangle of OGC, the programs. What I'm focusing on is the innovation program in the, in the top. I borrowed a couple of slides from Ingo to quickly go over the organizational details of the of a test bed, or the, the innovation program in general, but the, 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 I want to take the example of a test bed, test bed and our participation in test bed 14. So the very first step is that there is an idea coming from the, the uh, communication outreach, uh, or not necessarily, but most of the time. And the uh, innovation program team search, searches for sponsors, and then they issue a call for participation. So that's what you can watch if you want to participate, if there is a call for participation. And you get their technical documents and also the management documents. Um, and you can decide to respond to, to the call for participation. And that you have typical things like deadlines and, and uh, send in. And one point that was mentioned before already is the cost sharing model. So you will find items in there where there are our sponsors interested in these items and they put money on those items. And it's, it, it will be labeled. There will not be the amount for each individual item, but it will say this item gets co-funding. And then you have to, to say, well, we add additional in-kind contribution to this uh, co-funding. The typical share would be like 50-50%. So 50% you get from OTC, from the sponsor, and 50% you contribute yourselves. And you simply send in the proposal the sponsors together with the IP team make the review and select the different teams. And one important thing is that most of the time, individual items, or not most of the time, but quite often in items are, are contracted twice. So that's important to also test interoperability right at the beginning. But in the end, if you're not yet an OGC member you, and you want to apply, it's no problem. The only thing you have to do is you have to write that you intend to become an OGC member when you are selected. That's the, the catch. <laughs> and yeah, so that's the, the selection works. And then when it uh, comes to the execution, there is typically a kickoff meeting somewhere. Most of the time it's in uh, the DC area where you also can meet the the other participants in person, particularly those that you that work, will work together in your thread and where you will make this what it's called technology integration experiments. So typically the, there will be clients and servers implementations, multiple for the same things, and then you connect as, as many as possible as you can, can, can achieve in typically in nine months. So the, the cycle is repeated every year for the test beds. So typically the, the execution phase is uh, typically nine months. So, well, you, you work on those, uh, your implementations, make demonstrations, make the technology ex uh, integration experiments, and the important thing is that you document all this. So there is typically a requirement to keep your demonstrations up for, for one year at least, and then you document everything in what we call engineering reports. And those engineering reports are then brought again to the OGC, to the technical committee. It's voted on, so all the, the typical process. But then it's fed back to the standards program. So that like gaps or enhancement that you find in the, in, and already tested it in the, in the innovation program, that's fed back to the standards program where then you can even up to really make change requests to standards coming out from, from, the, from the initiative, not only the uh, engineering reports, that's, that's the two important results. 
So if you're interested, this is the one URL you need to follow. <laughs> okay, so let me take talk a bit about by example. So what, for ex our involvement, so we participated in Testbed 14 last year. Then the testbed is organized, as I said, in, in multiple threads. So we selected the Earth observation and clouds threads uh, to participate to. That's important because the, this organization in threads, it's also the group that you will like regularly meet on teleconferences. So if you participate in multiple threads, you will have multiple teleconferences a week. So this is important to take into consideration when you reply. And inside of the threads, you have various tasks. And we participated to the SWOTH data and climate forecast convention tasks. So what does it mean as uh, SWOTH data? It's uh, data that is still in satellite geometry, so not yet auto-rectified. Or it's reference, so it's referenceable, but it's not yet auto-rectified or anything to, to Earth. And there we, we build, we're building a WCS and also a client and Earth observation application client to WCS. So we selected uh, to as a, I mean, it's a software that, that I should introduce before, so based it all on uh, open source software. So here it's uh, the UX server that provides the various interfaces, like uh, in this case WCS is what we needed to extend. And on the client side we have various uh, the tools and the, the integration together is the UX client, but in the, in the core there are the, the different parts like the Graphly and GeodivGS and so on and forth. So what is our concrete participation? We selected a rather, uh, how to say it, it's not a standard uh, satellite that you would expect, it's called CloudSat. And as the name says, it's measuring clouds in the atmosphere. So it's a sounder that it's not taking pictures of the, of the Earth, but of uh, cutting through the atmosphere. It's uh, vertical curtains, as we call it. And then they come in, in still in satellite geometry with uh, really difficult, uh, I mean the format is not that hard, but it's, uh, it's hard to visualize it because there is no regularity whatsoever. So for example, the, the height values, the, they are always starting and stopping at different heights. So none of them are at, uh, at one line of height, for example. Um, also one thing that you typically produce in, in test bits is uh, videos for, of the demonstrations. So I. Nope, that was wrong. I hope I can play this video here. That would be awesome. All right. Cool. So this is really the, the demonstration that we implemented to, um, the client. So you, the important point is here that you really want to analyze the data. So you have to do, you, uh, not only make nice visualizations, but really get the, the actual data. That's why we're talking about WCS. I mean, it's WMS will also be difficult because of the vertical thingy. So in, in a typical WMS, you only have one line. But anyway, the, the, the goal here is really to have the actual data. And by the way, it's running in the browser. So you have cesium on the left side. And on the uh, time slide at the bottom, you can select the, the data you're interested in. So in blue, you have an indication where we have this CloudSat data. And you select which, which time interval you're interested in. And the point is we are in the background, we are sending WCS requests. So we're really retrieving the actual float 32 data. So this is why there's also some, some delay because you had transferring it a couple of megabytes. But the, the beauty of it is now that we have the, the actual data in, in the browser and we can play around with it. So we can change the, the visualization quite easily and thanks to, to WebGL and to Magic from Daniel, <laughs> this all works really fast. Some, um, yeah, the video, so in this case, it's just changing a color scale and, and, and things like this. Uh, okay, trying playing around with transparency. But then, in, uh, like what you see here, the, the yellow part is the, that's all the clouds. So that's what we're actually interested in. The, the purple parts, that's just no data. We just get rid of it. So we can f place a filter on it. We just visualize certain values. And also, we have full interactivity on the analytics plot. That's uh, roughly behind, if I'm not mistaken. 
and you can even like click on individual uh, items to to see the, the values on on this particular point. Um, well, the video is continuing a little. I think yeah, it's only now. The next thing to show is only uh, interesting visualizations from cesium. Is it? It's not that long. Yeah. Do you know all cesium or are interested in this cesium madness? It's uh, two and a half D view that I, that I like. It's nice animations. Maybe it's not so impressive for a, a technical audience, but usually this is impressive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to try it yourself, to point your browser to the URL. Just uh, make sure that you have some resources left, some some uh, 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 memory and CPU. It takes it takes a little res resources. And uh, the engineering report, if you want to see the written results, it's, it's also linked here. Uh huh. How am I doing? Oops, three minutes. Thank you. Ah. Okay, this is just to quickly show that was the old system. Not really interactive and especially no 3D and analysis. So that's what we're trying to replace. Okay, I have to screenshots in case the video wouldn't work. So for us, why, why, why would we participate in a, in a testbed like this? So it's uh, really, the, as I said, the, the tie experiments, that's really the core to, to work together with the other participants. And already at the very beginning of the standards development in the first phase, you test out immediately the, the implementations if the clients and servers, if they work together, if, you're, if it work together with other implementations across uh, different programming languages and so on and forth. Uh, typically because of the sponsors, they bring in their real world problems. So you're working on real world scenarios and the interoperability requirements you can have, you will then have to hopefully cool demonstrations to show off, and it's also promoted by OGC. So the video I was playing is on the OGC channel, and you can even bring in your own uh, ideas if you if you have identified enhancement needs or gaps, and it's on both sides. It's in the standards and also in the in the software. Well, and speaking a lot about the, the OGC API these days, the, it's really that you can help shape the next generation of, of those interfaces and the standards. And also to mention, you get early access usually. I mean, it's changing now because of the, because of, uh, the adoption of GitHub. So like, for example, for the OGC API, I think all of the working groups voted to open their repositories where they work on the standards to have it publicly available to everybody to see it early. And also in this case, and this is why the European Space Agency is also interested in this implementation, is the, as I mentioned in the beginning, is the preparation for the EOLUS mission. So EOLUS is the, the wind mission, and the interface now might look a little familiar to you. So if, you, if you're interested, it's still in the commissioning phase, and the, the registration is yet not yet opened, but it should be within this year let's say, <laughs> soon, that you can really go to this, uh, to the viruses, aolos.services uh, domain, register and play around with the wind data in this case. So not cloud, but winds data. And this is how it looks like. And this, uh, the, the aim would be that this interface is completely driven using open standards. So it is using open source already, 100%. Open standards, not yet. <laughs> but the Results from testbed 14 should, help, 14 should help to get this 100% OGC standards compliant as well. Well, that's it for my slides. Are there any questions? Thank you, Stefan. Are, you, are there any questions? So, who of you have has participated in an IP initiative of the OGC? So, 
would you say, um, what, 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 are, what are the experiences? I mean, we are, we are here to, to just, Easier. It's easier like that. I don't have to shout. Um, you know, the idea here is to, to exchange information, experiences. So, and you have seen our Stefan's present, presentation, and I, I think uh, he really managed. You know, it, it, it really was intriguing how the, the he, he bridged the open standards world and the open uh, source software world. So is that something you know you would take home? What 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 are yeah? What are your ideas? So we had the question about how is this funded? How does it work? Um, yeah. Are there any topics you say that came to my, your mind? Like oh, that is interesting. I have a, I have a requirement or that I would like you know to see more implementations happening. Is there something you know? We, as a, as a, yeah, having our foods in both communities um, could help with that. I don't know. I, unfortunately, I don't okay, know. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was just wondering uh, if you could uh, let us know what's your awareness about the interest from the SDI and the community, especially to support the, the usage of coverage data. Okay, so the, the question was in brief, I think, the, the relationship between uh, the coverages world or WCS and Inspire and how those two communities or those two groups can work together or how they are interacting already. So um, I think there is a, a, little, a little bit of history to this. So from, I'm coming from the from the coverage side of things, but also from in the implementation, like I mentioned MapServer before. So for example, we have implemented the Inspire support in MapServer for WMS and also to some extent for WCS. And then we would like on, on the OGC side, very much welcome more collabor collaboration with the Inspire world. But as, as correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in the beginning it was like Inspire decided for the coverage as well, to go a different way and make their own thing. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, the, this has changed now and the collaboration is increasing, as I understand. So, not me personally, because I'm not involved in Inspire side that much. But the, the, at the very beginning, like even the, the definition of what a coverage is was different. So, I, I think this is now corrected. And I hope that uh, this will, and now the new opportunity, of course, with the uh, open API, the OGC API coverage is definition. If we manage to bring together those two communities, I think it would be a great opportunity right now, a great point in time to collaborate, to uh, get the adopted, the, the one thing right and adopted on, also in Inspire. That would be my hope. Um, yeah, so I cannot, tell in, in, in terms of the details on the coverage, but just on the collaboration side. So uh, we have a, also a memorandum of understanding in our terms, collaboration a research agreement in uh, JRC uh, uh, words, where we work together with JRC and the main contact is Michael Lutz. And what, and, and this is, a, the, I'm, I'm looking at the community, so if you're involved in, in, in the Inspire community or, um, and you're also involved in the OGC community, you know, make sure that, yeah, that you, you speak up for, for, you know, for what you need. Um, because we have seen members, member states that are active in Inspire and that are members in OGC, that organizations, and, uh, you know, there is this gap because they, not, they do not speak up. So, and, uh, but with the, with the collaboration agreement in place, we're really looking into more activities. And, 
yeah, there have been some workshops, um, the hackathons. I think there, um, you know, in the, in the next couple of months, there will be more more activities coming up. Um, and if you have any questions about that, again, you know, drop me a note. Or there's also, you know, talk to the JRC people. Alex, stand up. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, because we really, we really want to solve issues if there are any. Thanks, Athena. Yes, I'm Alex JRC Martin. I think you know most of uh, us here uh, know each other. But uh, just uh, two comments. One is with regards to coverages in particular, and the other one is general. So for the coverages, I think to a large extent, the, uh, on the service interface uh, uh, level, things are already sorted out because there is a mapping and the guidance document about the use of WCS as an inspired download service. Uh, which uh, I think is already being uh, um, uh, taken on board by European data providers. There is also the Inspire Reference Validator, which is handling WCS. But of course, now when we have the API way of doing things, uh, this needs to be repeated because I'm not sure that the new API would be backwards compatible with WFS. Clearly not yet. Yeah. Like I, I think if this is what is going to happen with. Uh, all of, but I think this is a nice opportunity also for Inspire to modernize itself. So yeah, I think uh, going to the general comment, uh, we heard, uh, but I think we, we would all agree here that there is no Inspire community, no OSGO community, no OGC community. We are one community and I think it clearly makes sense that we all work uh, together because we heard in the plenary yesterday, software is useless without data. The same from the data side, data is useless without software. Both of them without standards uh, make uh, very little sense. So I think, yeah, we all have to work together. Yeah, thanks, that a very nice comment. Thank you, Alex. Um, good, any more questions? We have now a microphone, so you don't have to shout. I can hear you better. Not, okay, then uh, I would say another round of applause for Stefan.